Good evening, Commander. So I'm doing OK on developing my rebel futuristic sci-fi army. Um, I'm modelling it around the Mantic Games um, system, Warpath, with uh, Warpath Fire Fight, Dead Zone and Star Saga as games that um, support and take part in that universe. But also, as a, as a general project, the army I'm developing at the moment doesn't actually have an army list or, or a, a faction um, in which I can play it. So I'm, sc I'm scratching together an army out of the, the models that I've, I've got access to. So I've bought lots of Dead Zone models for the Dead Zone game, which I'm playing, which is great fun. And I've, I've got, these, got these here um, models as well to support my army. I've got this kind of cool Rubicon one here, this truck, which I've... Put loads of mantic bits over and uh, zinge um, bits over and make chunky wheels i've bought a mule which is a gcps kind of marine i think it's gcps i'm not sure um but it's a kind of a a futuristic kind of colonial marine type um light uh, troop transport vehicle i've bought kind of a heavy transport vehicle it's forge father's tank Forgefather's APC, so that was really fun to put together, actually. Um, so I thought, you know, finally, maybe one, maybe two more vehicles, but I've got one more vehicle in the collection to make. I'm also thinking of doing some bikes, which I will get from somewhere. But I thought also have a bit of air support. Not too much air support. There's, these are reps, these are rebels. They're, you know, they're like Mad Max. They're grabbing stuff from here and there. But hey, in Mad Max, there was even a helicopter or a microlight plane, if I remember. So, you know, even rebels can have air support. So I've decided that my rebs faction has stolen a Hornet dropship from the... Um, from 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 the, the the marine contingent, from the the guys in charge, so they're going to steal one of these and get it working for them. They're going to use it to transport troops, maybe vehicles. So I'm going to make up one of these. So let's have a look. Let's have a look what's in the in the box. I'm going to for this use, Caliburn, the knife of ultimate penetration. So there we go. Pop that in. Make sure that's moving away from me. Very good. Look at that. Health and safety in action. I can tell. All of you health and safety officers are very impressed out there. Um, like lots of brownie points. There we go. That should be enough. Let's rip the rest off. New box smell. Let's have a smell. Yes, it smells good. It smells good. There we go. So, think a bit of paper. Uh, environmentally and carefully dispose of that. Very good. All reasonably priced, I would I would say, Mantic stuff. Their kind of philosophy is to put lots of models on a table rather than charge the earth for individual ones. So I, I would also assert though that the quality is pretty good. Um, you know, the models are detailed and everything, well cast, sturdy and rugged. So I don't think you know you're not you're not leaking quality for that 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 price either. So that's good. So there he goes. And it's got these kind of cool turbo fans in them and everything so I'm looking forward to this now fans have got this uh, looks like they've got this policy of challenging the maker with essentially what is a sci-fi jigsaw puzzle um, in that they don't actually send instructions with your model so uh, you're going to have to work on how to do it now I'm going to do that with you you're going to see how I <laughs> how I attack this and get it all wrong. Um, so thank you for joining me for that. So uh, in the box you get this, which I'm guessing is a flight stand. Out comes the sword to save the nation once again. There we are. There, whatever nation you happen to be in. Yeah, Caliburn doesn't mind. It'll help anyone. There we go. Flight stand, which goes like so. Oh, it slots in. I've not seen a Mantic flight stand before. Oh, that's pretty cool. It just slots in. So there's no peg to break as such. That's proper steady as well. It's like a cross piece. Nice, nice. There we go. Proper sturdy. There we go. See, that's a battle cry. There we go. So good. That's nice and sturdy. Please with that. Throw that away. Good. So we've got these bits. 
put them right on the table because that's fun. Wow, there are a lot of bits in here, commanders. Um, be careful also because this box is folded in such a way there that very small pieces, I wouldn't say get, would get stuck behind, but could just get stuck under there. So just make sure all the bits have come out. There we are. Wow. Wow. Where do we even start? So many bits later, a bit of dry fitting, um, which these models are actually really good at. I've got to say there are, um, although there are no instructions, the, uh, the the bits can actually go together quite quite well without without glue. You can make the whole model or anything, but uh, enough of the bits go together to give you a good idea of what's happening. So where to start? Let's let's dive in. I'm going to go and start with these two parts here, which are the front of the piece itself. So they just go together with the two sets of pegs and holes there, which uh, go together nicely like that. Like so, Ooh, he said, there we go, like that. And I'll glue those together, like so. Then we've got a piece on the top here, there, which looks like the cockpit, which goes, I think, there's a little peg there, hole there. I think it goes on something like, oh, wrong way around. Like so, the hole there. Don't know what that's for yet. Let's have a look. Box. Oh, it looks like a gun goes. Looks like a gun goes there, doesn't it? Commanders, yes, it does. Great. So I'll put that piece on next. Brilliant. Right, I'll put that aside. Look at the tail section next, which is these two bits here which fit together like so you see you see holes there pegs there on that she goes and you see there hole there well that's because um one of these sets of propellers goes on so that just fits in it's little pegs there uh, holes there notches there for the pegs to go on go in Oh, that one doesn't fit. So I'm assuming there's two different sizes. That one. There we go. So there's, there we go. So there's only one that fits. Straight in there. Then that goes straight over the top like that. Now I'll glue. Oh, he says. There we go. Lovely. Tail section. Forward section. Hole big peg in like that that's the next job it's there main fuselage of the dropship put that aside there perhaps there we go what should we start on next let's have a go at this wing section here not a lot of flashing to take off yet that's true of this piece no sprue cutting Someone's done that for us, so that's good, isn't it? I'm going to do, I think, put the uh, put the rotors on. So I think that there should be a slot somewhere. There we go, slot, because there are pegs there. These rotors drop into. You see, they're actually very loose. Look, how good is that? So. Um, I've got to put that in such a way that that stays like that. And then you've got this ring here, restraining ring. So say, isn't it beautifully contoured? I'm not being too much of a pedant to, you know, point that out. But I really like the contouring on that, irregular contouring on purpose to, um, I, I assume, represent um, the aerodynamic nature of this futuristic dropship. So there are two... Um, Pegs there, two holes there. Now I've got the wrong for the right side, which I'm not sure of. Um, that should fit in there. Uh, yeah, that's the wrong one. <coughs> Expert at model making me. There we are. You see that fits in there. And look, 
it still moves inside so that's actually that one that's glued in that'll be in there forever and I'll forever be able to move the core uh, rotor to aid its movement so I've uh, done both sides both wings there we go so the uh, look at that super so uh, they're free moving so I'm going to put those on to the fuselage now so you've got this uh, stubby bit that goes down at the front which fits there at an angle see that there we go so that'll fit into there like so and like so and uh, on the other side of course like that as well great starting to really look like a drop ship now look at that coming together nice so um what to do next let's have a look we've got um got these wings here or, or stabilizers or something and they go on like that it's nice isn't it kind of 3d element to it there you go oh wrong one there we go they're slightly contoured so you can see there's a bit that you, know, you see that shape there in the middle it corresponds to the shape there so you can make sure you've got the right one on the right side and again you've got peg and hole for that to go into just like that to so glue that in so I'm going to glue that in next so uh, there we go contours there match so we've got the larger portion of the stabilizer pointing down and the smaller part with the three kind of dots there pointing upwards as well if I've if I've got that the correct way around um, don't blame me if it's the wrong way around so next we're going to just put that down for a second Next, we're going to look at the assembly for the kind of version of that stabilizer that's on the rear, um, uh, on, on on the rear tail, on, on the tail of the of the drop ships. We've got these bits here. Now these look very similar, don't they? Those two bits look the same, and those two look the same, but they're different commanders. They are. So both of these fit neatly onto the back there, no problem. But there's a slight difference in the back here so one of them has a cutout in the middle there can you see has a cutout in the middle like so and one of them the cutout is at the side look at that can you see you dropped a bit I'll have to pick that up in a bit and it's to the left there a little cut out there if you can see it there you go you can see it now can't you great so what that does so let me pick up the other bit that i've dropped on the floor there's a corresponding difference in the grooves here can you see again one's got a little peg there look and one's got one at the side so these are designed cleverly so you can't put them in wrong it simply won't go into the wrong one. So if I put the one with, in the middle, in, in the one with the with the groove that's got the cutout in the side, it won't go in. It'll only go in the correct way up. Um, like so. There you go. And it'll fit in nice and snugly that way. How clever is that? So I'm going to put those together um, like that. And then I'm going to put those to the side oops Daisy like so so what I also noticed is that uh, can you see the differences there you can see there are differences that look like flaps don't they I don't know if they are flaps they look like flaps you've got one there that's, that's kind of blank you've got one there that's striated it's got a kind of a grid on it now on the box which I assume the um, careful makers have done properly I don't know if you can see but the striated part is pointing up and to the rear of the vehicle so that's how I'm going to put mine on so there we go like so up and to the rear of the vehicle and I know that that's on correct because the the pegs between the piece there and into this stabilizing um, tail section wouldn't go in any other way so I'm going to um, put 
this section in, which I believe is for, I think, putting on the on the stand. There's some crosses there and some crosses there. So I think they probably somehow fit. Ooh, he, he says, there we go. So that's for, you know, putting your model on. Uh, when it's flying, I guess, in a game. So you, you denotes that it's flying or hovering or whatever the rule is. So I'm going to glue that into, into there. Which I think probably goes like that. So I've put that on there now. Great. So X's, X's. Should go in there, he, he says. Really. It's lucky my models uh, try and hit the target for me, isn't it? Because I, I can't hit a target on my own. There we are. <laughs> there we are. Very good. So look. Whoosh. No effects budget spared for the throw saw channel. So next I'm going to look at the transport section. I guess it's where the troops hang out or supplies are, are stowed, uh, ready for drop. So you've got to you know, set Pegs there, holes there again. It's becoming a theme. Mantic goes together quite easy. Look at that. Nice glue that together, obviously. So there's another animated um, feature of this model. So we've got these cool wing like um, doors or flaps that go in. They're going to open. It doesn't seem immediately obvious how that's going to happen, but how it's going to happen is you see the the pegs there, so you pop that in like so. And then you put these sections, there's one with a door, over the, over the edge there, and those little holes. See, there we go, fit into the pegs. Like so. And then hopefully on the other side, don't worry, I'll be gluing this together, apart from the opening doors. I hope I won't glue those. There we are. So that fits on, oh, that fits on quite well. There we are. So that's, the pegs are now restrained by the end pieces. Let me, there you go. And then, look, the flaps open. So you've got a door there, but I think that goes, I think that door's actually for access from a role-playing point of view. It's a little modelled door there, look. I think that that is the access. The door goes there, like so. How cool is that? Um, so that's how your troops get in. It's back onto its flight stand. And then I guess they could get out of the door, couldn't they, if they need to get out in a, in a covered way or for quick deployment, the flaps open and out pile, out pile your troops. Brilliant. So I'm going to glue these two sections together and those on the ends. So brilliant. So that's the, uh, that's the drop pod done. So what would happen is in combat that, that, that would clip up underneath your drop ship like so your drop ship would then drop boink, that the ramps fall there's even a little lip there so you can get your fingernail in like that brilliant like so and then you would exit the drop uh, pod uh, in order to do battle now there we see can you see the little hook put that behind it there. Right, so there we are. Look, there are little hooks. Um, and I think they clip up into that. But I don't see how that's removable once I've done it. If I clip that up into there, I think it just stays there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it for the moment. Just in case I've made a mistake and there is a way of unclipping that properly and I've just not worked it out yet because I'm a dunce. If it's meant to be permanent, 
and once that's on, that's on, that's the configuration, you never change it. Well, I, I don't want that. I want to be able to, I don't know. I want to be able to clip a vehicle underneath it as well, don't I? There you go. So I want, I want to be able to represent swooping in and dropping my mule and getting into combat as well. So I don't want to limit my, my, my possibilities. So all I'll do, if, if this is indeed a permanent configuration, is I'll chop those off. So you put the flight stand in the little box, X's. There we go. And then I'll just sit the dropship on top of it and use it on the table like that. Um, and that's how I would do it instead. So there we go. So that's the box done. So um, next it will be the skids, the uh, the landing gear of the dropship. So what we've got here is some running gear. Is that the word? No, that's that's the the uh, the leg. That's the skid itself. There's a little D hole there. There's a D peg there, so that'll fit like so. There you go, brilliant. And then there's its twin there. Brilliant, there we are. And then they fit that whole, so peg, peg, a big peg, little peg, big hole, little hole. Is there a little hole in there? What is in there? I promise. There, like so, you just glue that in. And then it should be able to um, just sit on there, like so. Uh, there's the skit on. Very good. Um, put that down there, see if it takes the weight. I'm sure it does. Professional designers and stuff. Yes, it doesn't overbalance or anything like that. It's actually very sturdy. Point, 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 point. There you go. An excellent demonstration of adverse weather and meteorological conditions. I think you'll agree. Um, yeah, brilliant. So, uh, it also comes with these um, covers here. Again, the large peg and small peg would fit in like so. So you could actually have these here. See, they rep they look a bit like those, so those would kind of move in and and, and take up that space there. Um, so if you want your if you want your machine without these legs out, I guess they fold fold into there. So I'm going to keep mine out because I see this spending a lot of time on the ground as a piece of kind of dead zone terrain and uh, war gaming on the ground. So onto the uh, small bits, look, there's a little arm there. Is that crew? I don't know. Can't see any heads or anything like that. Um, but there is a gun assembly, which looks interesting. So let's have a quick look at the gun assembly. Um, so the Gatling cannon. So you've got this here, which I'm guessing is put into that hole there, like that. Yeah, that actually fits correctly. Um, it doesn't move as such, but it moves a little bit. But you, you, I'd, glue, I'd glue that into place. Cool. And, um, ah. and then you've got a D hole and a D peg. It's like so. So you've got three smaller D holes there. And you've got three barrels of guns which have very small D pegs. So essentially, you put that in there, twist it around till it fits. Maybe you've got the gun the wrong way around. There we go, yeah. So you actually put three of those in, there's three, two more. And then you end up with a cool looking Gatling cannon. And then we've got um, these kind of shaped pieces here. Didn't quite know where to put them, and uh, seems to be a peg behind. But I think that they go under here. Like so, I think the air intakes. So must be like a jet engine in this too. How cool is that? A jet turbine powered 
V-Stall dropship ace. So, uh, here we are. I've made up the Gatling cannon because you've got to have a Gatling cannon. That's probably, to be honest, what's going to go on the, the chin mount. Like so. There you go. Looking good. Ace. Um, you can also have this kind of missile pod. Missile pods also look pretty cool. Or this looks like some sort of energy weapon. Plasma gun, magma cannon, microwave beam cannon or something like that so uh, yeah that can also go on the chin um be quite nice i think may model later some some wing pylons It'd be quite nice to have an extra weapon under there perhaps maybe that's just me being too eager for firepower i don't know um there are also options for smaller guns Look, there's a like a pintle mounted gun there which goes in with a little Set of hands there. There we go. Um, I'm guessing that that's actually part of the um, crew. Maybe, maybe for in here. I don't. I don't know. But I'm going to model that without. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to go and finish at the um, finish at the weapon selection. I'm probably going to go for the Gatling cannon and the chin. I mean, you would, wouldn't you? So there you have it, Commanders. We've got the finished Mantic Hornet dropship. I've gone for the Gatling cannon underneath there. Very cool, because it's a Rebs dropship. And what, what else would we to choose but a huge Gatling cannon? I think, to be honest, that gun is so big, it could represent, you know, a multiple plasma projector or a laser cannon whatever you want really because those barrels are big enough on their own um, so that's cool so i'm going to use that ultimate flexibility um i think in representation of what the gun can be the pods there for the moment so very pleased with that okay. Ooh, how cool is that i think that's very cool myself um, so yeah, that, that's ready. I'm going to add that now to the procession of vehicles that will be aiding my Rebs in future. So put that pride of place just there. So if you've got any suggestions of what vehicles you think I should be using for a Rebel futuristic force, specifically for Warpath perhaps, or, you know, I'm willing, as I did with this truck here, to look at other model lines as well. Um, do do tell me you know, the majority of my stuff i'd want some mantic stuff on it i'm going to be playing dead zone um which i've been able to do here but uh, yeah give us suggestions of, of different vehicles you might think i might uh, i might want to use i'm thinking perhaps a motorcycle or jet bike what do you guys think so uh yeah drop me a comment um give us a like share subscribe and uh i hope I hope that whatever army you're playing, whatever force that you're representing, that um, you know, when you're using a grenade, that you throw it in the right direction. Remember, throw it hard, because it's got this horrible habit of bouncing straight back at you. Thanks for joining us. Take care.